My name is Kyle Hill and welcome back to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center and Space Camp here in beautiful Huntsville, Alabama for part two of our three-part series we are calling Jedi. <coughs> Gotta stop doing that. Jedi versus Sith, where we're taking two Star Wars cosplayers and pitting them against each other in challenges to see if they can earn the robes and the armor that they wear so proudly. Now, in part one of our video series, Jesse came out to a commanding lead, winning both the bonus round and had the fastest time atop the dreaded pamper pole in our version of interstellar combat training. Mylin, you're a bit behind, but there's still a lot of time to make up ground. How are you feeling? I feel like as long as I'm not three stories above the ground, I'm gonna be just fine. So that is Jedi versus Sith part two coming up now. We are beginning this challenge day with a possible bonus round. Are you ready? All right, for your first question, which of the following is not one of Darth Vader's moves in Star Wars Battlefront 2? Lightsaber throw, choke, focused rage, or lightning? Okay, Jesse. Lightning. Lightning is correct. Aiden Verso fought in the Battle of Yavin under what call sign? Sigma 3. That is correct. What moon is the Inferno Squad on when the second Death Star explodes? No, Endor, it's Endor. It's Endor, yes. Which planet did Aiden Versio grow up on? Vardos. Nailed it again, my lad. There are two editions of the game that will be available at launch, the standard edition and what other edition? Elite? No, I'm sorry, we're looking for Elite Trooper Deluxe Edition. We are out of time, so with three questions correctly answered, Mylin, you are our winner, which means you get our bonus for today's bonus round, meaning that you will be taking a few materials away from Jesse in today's big challenge. Sounds kind of vague, but interesting. Let's find out why. All right, now our big challenge for this episode is actually a two-part challenge, but they both have to deal with mastering the perils of atmospheric re-entry. So for part one, you will be protecting your egg troopers, these little guys, from heated harm by creating an ablative shield. Michelle, why don't you tell us a little bit about what an ablative shield is? An ablative shield is what we use on our capsules on re-entry. Uh, for example, the Apollo capsule, when it was re-entering the atmosphere, was coming in very fast, about 11 kilometers. And on the bottom was this ablative shield. When it hit the atmosphere, it would actually burn and char off in layers, taking the heat away from the capsule. Could you walk us through some of the materials that our contestants will have access to? Yeah, of course. So these are some normal materials you probably have in your house. We have things like cork, paper, felt, lasagna noodles, mm. aluminum foil, steel wool, sponge, aluminum mesh. Now that you know the materials, Mylin, since you won our bonus trivia round, you now get to choose which three materials you want to take away from Jesse. Uh, I think the aluminum, the cork, and the felt. I went to school for metalsmithing, and so aluminum is one of the worst conductors of heat. So that was like the main thing that I wanted to use. Materials are all set for both contestants. Are you ready? All right, your time starts. Now, get building. My strategy is to create multiple layers for the burn away. So um, you don't want to stack too much metal because too much metal is going to start absorbing the heat. And so I want to create kind of like a little heat sink. Uh, I lost a lot of really important materials. So my strategy is basically building layers that will burn and flake off and hope that it distracts the fire from destroying my egg. Even by taking materials away, I'm wondering if I have forced her to be more creative. All right, and that's time. Hands up, materials down. It's time to bring the fire. Come on. I have your egg troopers right here. <laughs> now what we will be subjecting them to is a three minute burn in front of a propane blowtorch. And if they can survive that whole time without cooking or vaporizing like they were hit with a blaster bolt, then you will have won part one 
of this challenge and get a bonus going into part two, which is you get to answer two questions outside of the chair. But we'll get to that. Michelle, I'll leave it up to you. And your three minute burn starts now. Uh, I'm really surprised it's lasted this long. <laughs> we can't see the other side of it, but something is unfair. <laughs> All right, Jesse, it looks like the worst is over. Why don't you go take a peek? <laughs> it's a little bit of charring, uh, a little warm, but I think he could have survived this. Michelle, yes. in your estimation, mm -hmm. Did this egg make it? Well, it, it was very warm. It is charred. Which means, my Lynn, it is up to you now. Michelle, will you please do your worst? Three, two, one. Time has started. <laughs> we have three minutes on the clock. It has to survive the burn. No charring, no browning on the outside of the egg. My Lynn, how's it looking? I don't smell any egg yet, but. She's picking up with tongs. So. Maybe oh. I need a heat okay. sandwich. Okay, now. Oh. Oh. Oh, he's not even warm. Oh. So <laughs> let's let's see. Yeah, it's no like, no charring on the back, no browning. I really thought he was gone. You can see, hardly even warm. You couldn't eat this. It looks like your egg trooper survived. Yay! <laughs> Today is going way better than yesterday. Um, but also, again, firmly on the ground. My Lynn, Jesse, this is the chair, the multi-axis trainer, or MAT. Here at Space Camp, NASA uses this to simulate potential tumbling while a spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere. As you can see, it moves in all three directions, and it's potentially, you know, disorienting. But my Lynn, you won part one of our challenge, so you get to answer two questions while it is not spinning. Good for you. Jesse, you have to answer all the questions while spinning. Which one of you wants to go first? Jesse. Jesse wants to go first. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going first. All right, Jesse, then you have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you possibly can. You ready? All right, let's do this. When I get into the multi access spinner, I'm, I'm really nervous because it's just a big metal thing. Jesse, your time starts now. In which game mode can you play split screen with a friend? Uh, arcade? Correct. <laughs> As seen in The Force Awakens, which iconic First Order location is now a playable map in the game? The, the Star Tower base? That is correct. She sounds like she might be having a little bit of difficulty. As it's spinning, I'm just getting more and more disoriented and nauseated as it's going, and I'm trying to hear the questions. My answers were partially correct and then veered off into the wrong direction. In which game mode do players take control of ships and fight in the vastness of space? Uh, I don't know. I don't know is incorrect. Which heroes will be included in the first season expansion? Incorrect. When flying for the Imperials, there are three pilotable ships in the TIE series, TIE Bomber, TIE Fighter, and the TIE what? TIE Imperial? Incorrect. Interceptor. And time. All right, Jesse, let's get you out of there. All right, great job. Jesse, how are you feeling? A little disoriented. I, I think that's that's the point of the thing. So you got three questions correct in the allotted time. It's pretty good. Mylin, you think you can do better? Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, well, let's get you in there. All right, time starts now. First question. How many locations will be featured in the game at launch? Eight. Incorrect. What is the name of Darth Maul's playable ship? The Scimitar. That is correct. Ah! But I thought I was gonna get like this like really big advantage by getting to answer two questions before the chair started spinning. But the thing is, the spin didn't affect me at all. I was laughing the entire time. 
What was the transport ship in the Phantom Menace that's also playable in Star Wars Battlefront 2? Um, the NTT? That is correct, multi-trip transport. The AAT is a powerful vehicle to destroy anything in its path, but what does AAT stand for? Um, armored assault tank. That is correct. <laughs> The best pilot in the Resistance, Poe Dameron, is now a hero in the Star Wars Battlefront 2 game, along with his X-Wing. What model is his X-Wing? Um, the T-70. Also correct! <laughs> what is the name of the tie-in novel that serves as a direct prelude to the game? Star Wars Battlefront Inferno Squad. Also correct! Last question, in the strike game mode, before you run out of time, last question, in the strike game mode, how many players are on each team? Um, eight. Correct, and time, that's time. Time, 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 <laughs> she's done. She seemed like she enjoyed herself. All right, Mylin, winning both challenges today, you are the winner of this episode, congratulations. Because we are not even close to done with Jesse and Mylin. Tomorrow, we have another full day of challenges and we have definitely saved the best for last. That is all from us here at the US Space and Rocket Center. Next up on Jedi vs. Sith, gravity meets water and our competitors feel the full weight of their mental and physical efforts. Until then, thanks internet.